Hey world, my name is Meg and welcome to my Hall of Awkward. Make yourself at home. So, I've been gone for a little while, did some growing, that sort of thing. Um, so I thought I'd come back and do something pretty cool. I thought I'd start something, you know, different, something I've never seen before. And, of course, I shouldn't have seen it before, because that's the whole point. This is supposed to be about stuff artists should never draw. This, sh this stuff should not exist. Um, so since it's the Christmas season, I decided to search up a random generator on Google for something Christmassy, and this is what came up. Sugar Plum Sparkle Cake. She's a bit of a bossy boots in the kitchen and always has to be in charge of making the Christmas cake. She wears a hat covered in pretty sparkles with a silver pom-pom and she makes slightly sinister toy dolls for all the good little children. I thought Sugar Plum Sparkle Cake would be the perfect thing to do because, well, it's Christmas time, it's time to deck the halls, it's time to make merry. My religion teacher is trying to bring that back. Make merry. Um, yeah, but it's that time of year and nobody wants to see evil elves. Like, that's something... It's a time for kids to be happy. You, you get my point. But, like, yeah, you don't want to see an evil elf. Especially, like, an evil elf on the shelf. Have you seen those? Those things are, like, really creepy. Some of the kids in my class haven't even seen them. And, like, we're doing this, um... Uh, elfie with a selfie thing at our school and whoever finds the elf and takes a picture of it and sends that in wins a $25 gift card to Wawa or something and then one of the kids like had no idea what he was doing and he touched the elf and if you know anything about elves on the shelves that's the number one rule don't touch the elves they die like it was stupid, so... Rip Elf, I guess. So, this is essentially what you should do and what you should not do when you're inking in general. Or, like, drawing anything, for that matter. So, the first thing you can already see, I already did that. It was rambling over it and I missed it. Uh, I put down what's called a mid-tone. It's a color. I picked gray here because I wanted a darker looking image. Um, it's a color that falls between the darkest color and the lightest color. So in this case it would be black and white. But if you were doing green it would be dark green and light green. Oh, yeah, I don't know, something like that. You put that on the background and it makes your colors look less washed out. Because if you were going in and you wanted to put down the skin color, you would think you're putting down the right skin color, but it's actually way too light. So this makes everything look a little more even. Um, the other thing I did was I made my lines really smooth. You have to have a really nice hand when you're inking. Um, at least I, I think they're pretty smooth. What else? Yep, that's the end of the video. I, I don't know anything else. No, okay, so here it is. When it, you're putting in your shadows, I learned this cool trick from, what's her name? Editing Meg, put it in now. Um, well, anyway, she said that if you put, um, if you pick like a nice color like red, say that, and you set the layer on multiply, then it'll make like a really cool looking shadow. And this drawing was actually to test that and see if that worked. So that's why I was so hesitant. Like the first time uh, I put that down uh, around the uh, eye and the hat. So this, this was a test to see if that actually worked. And it did. A nice transition from shadows, you need to figure out where your light source is going to be in order to put your shadows down. Like, how else would you do it? You can't just put down shadows without meaning. If you're gonna do shadows at all, if that's your kind of style. Um, so in mine, my light source is coming from the top left. 
you can see kind of clearly I have the shadow on the opposite side of the doll like you have to kind of pretend that it's an actual 3d object so if the light is coming from the left side of the image then all the shadows would be over on the right side of the image so you can see but I put some around the back there because that's a shadow from the arm cast shadows probably know what that is too. Cast shadows are, um, you know, say I have a book, right? And the book is sitting on the table and I have a spotlight right on the book. If I hold my hand over in between the book and the spotlight, there's going to be a shadow of a shadow of my hand on the book. And that's what's called a cast shadow. Now, all shadows are cast shadows, but that's besides the point. That's not that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point is a cast shadow from what seems to be like a different object. Like that's the cast shadow from the arm onto the torso, not a shadow from the torso onto the torso. If that makes any sense, I know I'm really confusing. Next, we've got movement, motion, like poses. You need to have a very dynamic pose if you're going to be creating a character. And, or if you're, if you're drawing a character at all, you need to have some kind of pose, some kind of style that makes the character stand out. So my character was going to look a little bit more sinister. So I wanted to include the cake and the doll in that. And the hat, of course, the hat's on her, so there you go. Got that. Check. Done. The cake is falling, so it's kind of showing, like, sinisterness, and the doll is sinister, so what more is there to explain? Uh, I'm really good at this, aren't I? Well, this looks like it's the end. Yeah, so you can see the final thing. I put my name on it. I added a little tag. I put the sparkles on. Not much else, though. So, I guess without further ado, cue the happy music. 